guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ty and I'm coming to you with another DIY So before we get started, I would just like to say um, welcome to, to all of my new subscribers and thank you so much for subscribing and um, I hope you guys enjoy my videos. I hope you guys continue to enjoy my videos. If you have any um, requests or anything, then don't be afraid to ask. Um, I'm definitely open to hearing any suggestions of any videos that you guys might like to see. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this video. Um, what you would need, I actually did a tutorial on all the patterns that you'll be needing for this video. So I'm going to show you how to use the basic bodice pattern and transform it into the pattern that you'll be needing for this particular top, as well as the sleeve pattern um, that I actually did a video tutorial on that as well. And I'll show you how to transform that sleeve pattern into um, the sleeve that you'll be using for the, you'll be creating for this top. So, so I'll make sure I'll leave all of the links of the tutorials down in the comment section below. You'll be needing your um, basic bodice um, piece here. This bodice piece here, I've already squared out the um, side seam here. Um, yeah, you'll be needing some um, additional pattern paper for this tutorial, um, as well as a ruler. Um, a curve ruler, pencil eraser, um, some tape, um, if you have tape, um, some um, paper cutters, as well as, of course, fabric shears and your pens, your sewing machine, your, your fabric, um, your matching thread, and all those good things. So you'll be needing all of that um, for this particular tutorial. And I believe I've said enough here for the introduction, so I guess I'll go ahead and get started on the actual tutorial. All right, so right now I have my pattern piece. Um, this is my front pattern piece here. And what I'm doing is, um, this is um, some pattern paper here. And I've already kind of traced it out, but I'm going to go over it with a permanent marker because I'm not sure if you can see it really good. But um, this is the straight edge of the paper here. So this is a straight edge and I have my center lined up with this straight edge. So you want to take your pattern, line that center up with that straight edge. And then you want to trace around your pattern. There you go. Your pattern should look pretty much exactly like yours. So now you want to make sure you label that this is your front. For this particular top, I actually want to bring my neckline down a little bit because when we created this bias, it was created from a t-shirt. So, you know, with the t-shirt necklines, they're pretty much like right below the neck, like right on that um, collarbone. And I want my my curve, um, as far as my neckline, to drop a little bit lower than right up on that collarbone because I don't want it to look like a t-shirt. I want it to look like a blouse shirt, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so anyways, what I'm going to do is go down about two and a half inches from that neckline there. I'm gonna go down from this point here, I'm going down two and a half inches. So, make a mark right there. Just because I want to make sure that my center, like I said before down there, is not um, turning into a heart, I guess. I want to go ahead and draw a line about 
a half an inch away or out. And now I'm gonna use that as a guide to create my curve. Make sure that curve is like on the straight edge of that line, but it's also lining up with your shoulder point right there. So I'm liking the position right now to where I'm pretty confident that it will create a perfect curve. So let's go ahead and draw my curve. Okay. I'm using a marker so it's like eh, super thick, but all right so now you see i have my curve here my new neckline i dropped the neckline um from the original neckline and the the technique that i used when i drew out a half an inch to create the curve it was to prevent your center when you cut your fabric it was to prevent your center from kind of it's kind of like a broken curve where it kind of turns into a heart like they're both curves, but it kind of turns into a heart, kind of like that. Maybe kind of how you draw a bird on a picture, but instead it's going to look like a curve. It's not going to be broken. I've labeled my center. And now what I want you to do is the next step is going to that shoulder and I want you to find the center of that shoulder. Find the center of your shoulder and make a mark. Now, you don't see, I have a vertical guideline here or a horizontal guideline here. So let me draw my horizontal guideline. Okay. Awesome. Go ahead and draw yourself a horizontal guideline. And remember that guidelines are to help make sure that you are squaring off um, correctly when you're drawing lines on your papers. So this is my vertical guideline and you just pretty much create that vertical guideline off of that straight edge of the paper. So you just use your ruler to find to make sure that it's lined up correctly on that edge and then draw a line. Now, that's why I would probably suggest getting um, rulers like this because it just, it's a multi-purpose ruler. It's like so amazing. I have like a whole set with the, um, yeah. So I'll probably leave a link in the description bar below on where you can purchase like a set of these for, it's affordable and everything. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and from that point, on my shoulder that I just marked. I'm gonna use this vertical guideline as a guide to make sure my ruler is lined up correctly. All right. All right, so now from that point, I'm going to draw a line all the way down to the bottom hem of my top. We're creating cut lines so we can um, cut the pattern to create the nice little flow. Now from that cut line, from this point here, the one that you just created from that point, find, I want you to find the center from that point there. Find the center from the um, edge here, the center of your shirt, from this point here that you created. Find that center and the center there. And then from this, using that guideline at the top, from this point here, you want to draw another cut line. And I'm having to do this because my marker is running out of ink and I don't feel like going to get another one. So, but this will do because I'm technically done with this top now. All right, so we're pretty much done with um, the front piece right here. We're done with this front 
and all you have to do is cut out your pattern around the new neckline, your shoulder, your arm hold, your side seam, and your hem. So go ahead and cut out the pattern like that and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to cut out this and create your new pattern from this old pattern. Now that we have cut out our pattern piece here, now what you want to do is you want to cut on the cut lines all the way to get to the top, the very, very top, but don't cut all the way through. As a matter of fact, I want you to go ahead just as a guide, get your ruler, mark, mark on your ruler an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch. Okay. So that is going to be your guide of where to stop cutting. So go ahead and cut up to that mark that you just put on your pattern. So after you're done cutting, it should look something like this here. Now we're going to use this pattern to create a new pattern. All right, so now what you wanna do is get another piece of paper. This I'm using craft paper. So get you another piece of craft paper, pattern paper, whatever you use. Um, go ahead and get a piece of that and what you want to do is lay your pattern on top and right now I'm going to just focus on the bottom and we'll get back to the top up here. That's why I kind of have it zoomed in here on the bottom. So what you want to do is spread out your pattern here and I have some tape. So the tape is going to help me maneuver or make sure that I keep everything in place. So I'm going to start off with my center piece right here. And I'm going to take my center piece down. All right. So I have my center piece taped down here. So now what I want to do is get my ruler now from both corners of this center piece i am going to measure out i'm going to measure out five inches five so five inches and if you want to you can make a mark just so you just so you just in case the pattern piece moves just make a mark at that five inch mark and I'm going to do the same for here. I am going to make five inches. All right, so let's go ahead and move our piece back at that five inch mark and now what i want to do is make sure that that's measuring five inches all right and it is let me see what this one right here just make sure all right so now that we have our two of uh, two other pieces at the five inch mark let's go ahead and take those down
the crazy thing about this tape is that it says it's invisible but it's clearly not invisible because i can clearly see it but <laughs> all righty all right so we have our bottom done and what i want you to do is you can freehand it really you really can just freehand um drawing a line from there to there so you can freehand it if you want to or whatever the case may be but i'm going to just use my marker here curve this is going to be the bottom of our new pattern here now let's go ahead and take a look at the top all right now for the top the pattern is pretty much done all you will have to do is go ahead and get your tape and secure that shoulder um, I would suggest you secure the armhole you're going to be cutting this out so it don't have to be perfect. As well as this neckline. You're just pretty much placing tape on random parts of this. So it can be secure when you cut it out. Alright, so let's go ahead and now that we have our tape on our pattern and everything is secure, let's go ahead and cut out on the outer seam of our new pattern. And you wanna make sure you cut your new hem, which is now circled or curved. So let's go ahead and cut out our new pattern. So just remove this should just come off easily like that and now you have your new pattern you have your um, new pattern the pattern that you'll be using for this tutorial so make sure you mark mark that that is your front and mark your center all right so i wanted to add that once you create your new pattern piece here there will be a slight little curve of that shoulder point right there so don't be alarmed it should be a slight little curve because when you opened up the top to create um a new kind of half circle top i guess then um it pretty much curved at that point right there so don't be alarmed that you might see a, a little curve right there on that shoulder all right for my back bodice i'm going to be doing the same thing that i did with my front bodice now with the back i want to drop the back a little bit lower or i want it to hang lower 
or longer than the front. So what I did was, this was the mark for my pattern right here. So what I did was, I measured down four inches right here on my center. This is gonna be your center. So your side seam is away from that straight edge. This is your side seam. Your side seam will remain the same that it was when you marked your pattern because that side seam is gonna connect with your um, front. So, with your front bodice. So, you need to make sure that that side seam is still the same length as that front bodice. Now, what I did was I went to the center of my back bodice piece and I went down to the bottom, the hem mark right there, and I went down four inches. So I made a mark there. And then what I did was the same technique that I used on my neck for my front bodice. When I drew out a line that was a quarter inch from All right, and so from that new point that I created that was four inches away from the original point, I then did this, used the same technique that I used on my neckline on my front bodice when I readjusted my neckline. I went out half an inch just to create a guideline for my new curve. And now what I'm going to do is, what I did was I curved I made sure my curve laid flat on that line, that guideline, and then I adjusted it to, to where the ruler met that point right there on the side seam. So then I drew that curve line and that created me a new elongated high-low, um, it's like a longer back or whatever. So that was the effect that I kind of wanted to do was do like the high low where the top was a little bit higher than the back and the back hung a little bit longer than the top now I need to go ahead and do the same technique that I did on the front piece to create my two cut lines I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to cut it out and go ahead and make my new pattern i'm doing i'm going to do the same technique that i did with my front piece so not sure if i'm going to get all of that on camera or recording but that is what i'm going to go ahead and do and then once i finish with that we can then go towards um working on our sleeve pattern So since the curve in the back is much deeper, it's going to be a little bit harder to um, figure out the center. So what I'm going to do is use the first line that I created as my guideline. And I'm going to draw a straight line across. And this is going to be my um, guideline. So let me go ahead and find the center point for that line. As you can see with the back pattern piece because of the high low curve that I created 
when you actually cut the pattern piece and you open it up is it's pretty much a little difficult it's, it's not as easy from the front piece where you can just go and create the curve so you're going to be pretty much kind of creating a new curve so I'm, I'm lining up my ruler and I'm using the points at the closer to the center so the points closer to the center I'm using those pretty much the longest points on each um, flap curve on each there's three flaps okay. so there's three cut flaps here and I'm using the longest curve I'm sorry I'm using the longest point as my guideline to create my new curve now that it's cut open and since I'm still trying to do that high low effect I still want it to appear to be longer in the back and then shorter in the front so I'm using the longest curve as the guide to create my actual new curve. So now as you can see, I've created my new curve and the shortest points on each flap were not a part of the line of the new curve. I used the longest points. So when you get to the um, side seam here where this is the end point of the other of the outside flap the side seam right here once you get to that long point you don't have to you can pretty much just cut along that curve right there just cut along that curve like the normal curve there and you'll be fine and that will be your back pattern so I'm going to go ahead and cut along my new curve and then keep that same flap right here. Just cut along that same flap right there and then cut out the rest of the pattern like you would cut it out normally. Like the first, um, the front bodice piece. So.